Daisy has already been briefed, if you could take the speculum and the side wall retractor there. Um, and we have already had a conversation, as I would with my normal assistant, about positions of these instruments with respect to the clock. So I'm going to grab a decent chunk of the cervix with the sponge holder. I don't want to grab too little, otherwise I might pull some off. In the real situation, I'll get the assistant to hold this in exactly the position I leave them. So I'm going to press down on the cervix and scrape that bladder back and hold it back by pressing down and up. My patients will have been to the toilet just before they walked into theatre and they'll have a light anaesthetic. So I'll only do an in and out catheter at the end. I have a clip on this end, which I'll normally clip onto the drape and my needle is slightly biased upwards so I can get even higher. Daisy, if you continue in six o'clock and 12 o'clock, that's lovely. I'm gonna take my first bite as high as I can and then possibly even higher. I'm gonna go deep enough so I get some cervical stroma and I can feel that, but n no more deep than I have to. I want my, my suture to circumference as much cervix as possible. So Daisy, if we now go to 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock, I'm then going to come down this way. I'm going to rotate the cervix a little bit, if it will let me, and grab another bite around there. Lovely. And then Daisy, if we go 5 o'clock and 1 o'clock, we can take our third bite again, as high as we reasonably can, but into the cervical stroma and no more, not just grabbing the mucosa because it slides down. And then my final suture is starting at around two o'clock and coming out quite close to where I first went in my belief is that the further apart they are, the more it tends to pull my knot apart. So I'm now going to take out the posterior retractor, the speculum, ask my assistant to take this cervix and pull quite firmly, more firmly than she might otherwise feel comfortable doing. I tie a slip knot with two throws in the same direction, run that up loosely, and another throw in the same direction. Because we've been using lubricating gel here, I'm just gonna hold that with the instrument. And then by tying a slip knot, and with pulling Daisy pull a little bit harder, I can make the effect of the knot even higher still, and I can feel that tightening up, and I'm doing it almost, but not quite as tight as I can. I'm now gonna tie a square knot on the top, so one in the opposite direction. Again, it's a bit slippy with this gel. And then one back in that direction to lock it down. Finally, I'm just going to cut these threads long. I don't tie a loop anymore. I've had a few patients where the woman has come in as an emergency and the people have only cut the loop and they haven't actually removed the cyclage suture and then pulled quite hard. At this point, we're going to do an in and out catheter to check there's no blood in the urine. And if not, uh, the woman will go home later on the same day. So I can now see how I did. We can take the uh, module out and unpop the cervix. It comes off quite easily. And there we go. Um, I'm fairly happy with that. It's quite high, or it's certainly as high as I could possibly get it. It seems to be reasonably tight. Uh, the threads are probably longer than I was expecting, um, but I'm pleased that there's the suture hasn't gone too deep. Most of this suture is encompassing the cervix and, and squeezing all of it, so there's little tissue left outside. Whether this relates to better outcomes, of course, we've no idea.